Okay, so today we have this uh, AMG Mercedes-Benz C-Class DTM-02. <laughs> um, it was, you know, a, a pretty cool racing car. Um, this model, um, this Tamiya model came out mm, roughly about 20 years ago. It uses the TA-02 chassis, which was pretty common back then. Um, kind of hard to find now. Anyways, turns out you know, this is a 20 year old model that's, um, that's actually pretty cool. I'm thinking maybe I can save the body, um, clean up the chassis. Um, when I say save the body, I took the, the peeling decals off already. Um, I also took off the spoiler and all that stuff. So what was I left with? This, um, this body, the paint is pretty bad. First of all, the cut on the wheel wells, um, is terrible jagged there's little cracks you know fortunately it doesn't go all the way through but even the paint um, is pretty bad it's pretty amateurish um, you know looks like they used a, a paintbrush you know in certain areas of the windows you know because the paint's kind of wobbly um, so the body on this is a pretty desirable body though you know especially considering it's 20 years old um, the front a Mercedes emblem is missing. Um, this emblem was part of the J parts tree on this. Good luck finding one. Um, it usually came with two emblems on that parts tree, if I recall correctly. But anyways, missing the emblem. Um, again, on a 20 year old model, hard to find. So we'll probably see about 3D printing something, maybe to replace it. Um, we'll figure that one out. I think what I'm going to do is this was painted uh, it looks like it was painted with Tamiya paint. Um, it's a, it looks like an, it's a very light acrylic coat of silver that was put on here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to, to strip the paint off of this without damaging the plastic using nitro fuel. Nitro fuel works great on the Tamiya um, acrylic paints, um, especially if they're on a light coat with no, with, with no backing coat on it, which this does not look like it has a backing coat. So um, we're going to give that a shot. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose because the paint on this is just, just, just terrible. And, and then we'll see about cleaning up some of these jagged cuts, you know, with the, with the sanding drum. So that's the body. We'll see how we go with the body. Um, then there's the chassis. So if the body cleans up, I'm probably going to just paint the body and use the same body. Otherwise, um, I'll stick with the original game plan, was, which was buying a chassis for one of my uh, uh, Lamborghini bodies. Um, this has a decent drift wheels and tires still on it. There's still some life in it. You know, it has the, the original um, 540 uh, motor on it. Um, anyways, might replace the shocks. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But nonetheless, we're going to tear this apart and clean up, you know, all the pieces. It looks like there's, you know, some use obviously on it, but it's not torn up. Um, if I can find a new tub, I'll probably um, see about replacing the tub on this. Otherwise, you know, I might just sand this down a little bit, polish it up and um, make it look kind of relatively like it was when it was taken out of the box. We'll see what happens with that. So that's the project. And uh, hope you stick with me. And as much as I hate to say it, I hope I make some mistakes along the way that um, everybody can learn from, including me. So let's work on the body now. Stay tuned. All right. So this is where we're going to use to see about stripping the paint off. Like I said, it's a light coat of paint. It looks like it's been put on. So I think we might have some, some pretty good luck with it. So let's get down to it. First thing we're going to do is take off these side mirrors here. They're held on by these little Allen screws. All right. We'll find that little bolt that just fell on the ground. Kind of hard to do this with the rubber gloves, unfortunately. I should have done this before putting the gloves on. So. OK, 
Okay, next we're gonna take off this front grill. That little Mercedes emblem was held on popping this little piece onto that little plastic piece we just took out. So the front grill just slides right out. So, all right. Let's go ahead and test this on a little piece of this. Um, we'll test it on the back bumper. Um, the black bumper is, you can, I don't know, the camera can pick it up. This has such a light coat that you can see through it. I'm just going to try this a little bit here. Oh yeah, that is gonna work. You can see the paint comes right off. And it stays clear, it doesn't cloud up. So we're gonna just go ahead and, and put some of this nitro fuel on here and let it do its thing. And um, kind of just hopefully just melt the paint away. And like I said, it'll leave the plastic clear and intact with I don't see any clouding on it whatsoever so let's do this oh yeah that paint is melting right off Look at that. That's nice. Look at that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. Basically, just do the rest of this thing um, without boring you with the details, and let's see how it looks once I'm done with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to work just fine. All right. Now that you see what I'm going to do, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, so what I did is basically I finished brushing up or brushing on some of that nitro um, fluid and then I got a couple of uh, 
of garage rags um, and basically doused them in the fluid and then just went over them with the, um, with the rags um, doused in fluid. And then when I was done taking all the paint off, um, I put it under hot soup and soap and water with the soft part of the Brillo pad. And there you go. Clean, clear, and just to prove it's the same body, you know, the, here are those jagged edges that I'm gonna deal with with the Dremel right now. So, um, yeah, so in the end, we'll have a pretty nice body to, to repaint. Even got rid of a lot of the surface um, uh, scratches on the windows. Um, so that's what nitro fluid does. Um, but it has to be Tamiya acrylic paint. It can't be thicked on. If it's completely thicked on, you're going to be sitting there forever trying to, you know, uh, dissolve the paint off. Fortunately, this had just a very thin coat with no backing on it. So it was pretty simple to take off. And this thing is, uh, like I said, about 20 years old, this body. And it's not brittle. It's still thick. Um, you know, like I said, all we're going to do is just clean up the mistakes of the past that someone made in trying to cut this out with the pair of scissors. And uh, yeah, so I'll clean that up and then let's move on to the chassis. All right, so let's start taking this thing apart. Usually the tub holds everything together. So the tub will usually hold the rear gear case, the front gear case, um, in place so the tub looks like a good place to start um, if not the uh, the front bumper you know that's usually an easy one to take out so let's start going at this Okay, so there's the electronics.
Okay, I think that's pretty much it as far as what we're going to take apart. I'm not going to bother taking apart the gear cases. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the ultrasonic cleaner just the way they are. Um, same with this one. Put it into the ultrasonic cleaner just the way it is. Um, that should be all right. If they don't turn smoothly um, after I take them out, then I'll take them apart. But don't think we need to go through all of that. Um, going to clean up all the plastic pieces with the tub on the bottom. Uh, I might either source a new tub because this is pretty scratched up um, or I might convert this to carbon fiber. Um, but I want to try to keep it vintage so if I can't, if I can't source a new tub, um, a new vintage tub, then I'll go the carbon fiber route. Um, the tires and wheels look fine, so we're going to leave those. So, yeah. So at this point, I don't think I need to, you know, repeat what I've done a dozen times in my past videos. This is all going to go into the ultrasonic cleaner um, using mean green, a, a dilution of mean green and water, 50-50. So let me clean these parts up, and then we'll come back and uh, put this whole thing back together again. So stay tuned. Okay. So... We took these out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and they're all in pretty nice clean shape now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up some of this excess plastic that came from the trees that these things were on. Um, they weren't cut off very cleanly so I'm going to do that but more so I'm going to take the gear case apart a little bit. It has bushings, plastic bushings um, and I'm going to replace the bushings with bearings. Um, since we have these apart, might as well make them right. So let's get down to business here. So these plastic bushings here is what we're going to replace. Let's see if we find the right bearings for these. Okay. So we're going to get rid of these plastic things. Now this might have a bushing inside that's plastic and it might defeat the purpose of us just putting bearings here, but it's not going to hurt. So I'm not going to bother taking that whole thing apart. So we'll just go through this right now. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing here. Okay. So, let's go ahead and get the rest of this together now. And let's start with the motor here.
So the interesting thing about the motor here, it has settings or little, little uh, embossed numbers on each of these little holes here for these screws that coincide with the number of teeth of the gear. So depending on the gear size, um, this will make the motor push out or push in depending on which one of these holes you use for it. So it's already been preset because someone had already built this prior. So we don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and put this motor in here. Okay. So there we go. There, this uh, motor mount here has a little lip on it um, that um, is going to be, needs to be flush with the chassis. So we want to make sure that we get that in the right way. So that might be important for us to do so. Okay, I think I think that's the right way. Worst case scenario, we might have to take the motor and just swap it over a little bit later, but I don't I don't think that'll be the case. All right. So now that we got that, that's I mean this is really easy to put together. At this point, um, we need the tub, and we need to start um, screwing some of these axles back in. So let's um, let's do that. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna put these, these go where the motor um, gear case goes. And it's missing the little rubber grommets that would go in here um, that help the axle kind of stay positioned um, outwardly. So I have some of these O-rings here that I think are really close to the size that they're supposed to be. So we're gonna put these guys in. And I'm using these EPR O-rings um, size 006. So just pop that O-ring in there. The position of the motor is to the left and this one with the long stem goes on this side and this one with the short stem goes on the left side. Okay, so that will get them in there and we'll come back to that. So. The next thing we're gonna do, this is already together as well, um, and it'll have two shafts that go in there, but we can put this aside for now as well. So let's go ahead and get the knuckles in place here. Okay, now for these knuckles, Gonna need some of these parts that we just got done cleaning here. So we're gonna need those and we're gonna need these shorter shafts here. Okay, because these I want to make sure I have the right ones because we've got the short ones and the long ones and these are going to be the rears so we're going to use the, the bigger arms here are the rears so this will go something like this if I'm not mistaken 
uh, these are these are the fronts. We want these. These are the rears. So that'll go something like this. I just want to make sure I get this right. <laughs> So we don't have to do this later. So this one is labeled R, so, and this one is labeled L, okay? So that way we know what position they go in. And then these guys here, I believe will go something like that. So, Let's just double check this, make sure we got this right. Get it right the first time. And the way we check is these are going to slide in here in the back. So yeah, so this is right the way we have it. All right, so we're going to screw these guys in here. these came with bushings again like so so we're going to replace these with bearings and these are the shafts that are going in I believe those are the sh no these are the front so these are these are the shafts going in here so let's see let's make sure we get the right bearings for those Let's see here. Actually, um, I'm not looking at those. Those can't be the rears. The rears have to be the longer ones, which are these. So these are the rear shafts. These are not <laughs> the rear shafts. These are the fronts. So, okay. So let's make sure we have the right bearings. Yeah. So we'll get one bearing from the front and then another one in the back okay oops so this will go like this. And these things, these pins will hold this in, but they won't, they're pretty, they move around a lot. So it's not like they're gonna do anything. You'll just end up losing them if you put them in at this point right now. So we're not gonna bother with those. We'll just, just leave it as, as that. And then here we need two more bearings. Okay, so that'll be that. Then so these come in place like this. So let's start first by putting the long shaft in here and holding these in place. Forgot to put this one in the ultrasonic cleaner. The other one I did and that came out pretty clean. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is put these guys in play here.
Could we have done this an easier way? Yes, of course. We could have taken this gear case apart more, but no worries. We got this. So that takes care of the rear. So let's get the front in play here. Before I put the put these in, I just wanted to show you there is a difference when you take these apart between the front and the rear gear cases on the shafts that go in. So on the um, front, um, on the on the front gear case, you're going to use the the thinner one to make sure it it fits into the grooves properly. Um, the rear is thicker, so you have to keep that in mind. So when you're putting these things in, they should go in all the way like this. If you try to put this into the rear, it's going to stick out a little bit and it's not what you want. So you want to keep that, keep that in mind. So these guys here um, are the rear. Uh, I mean, are the front. And these guys here, the thinner ones, are the rear. Okay? So, I just wanted to make sure you knew that. And same here. Okay? Notice the difference between these two. Okay? The shorter one goes in the rear, and the longer one goes in the front gear case. Okay? And usually the front gear case will be shinier. I've noticed that the rear case is, is a little bit um, less, uh, less shiny, but nonetheless, it's irrelevant. The smaller one in the rear, oops, the smaller one in the rear, the longer one, and the shorter one in the rear. Okay? So be aware of that. It's easy to get confused with these. Okay, so let's get started with these guys. Now these guys here, unlike the rears, don't require the little, um, the little grommets inside. So that one goes there, and this one goes on the other side. Let's make this easier here. There we go. And they should come flush, flush with the case. Okay. So now we have uh, these and I want to make sure that we have the right bearings for these as well. Now for these, they have a metal bushing that's, um, that's pretty large. I don't have bearings that size, but the front takes the same bearings as the rear. So the front, we can snap a bearing in place there. Yeah, maybe not. Let's rethink this. No. Nope.
that is a larger bearing and I don't think I have a oh yes I do have bearings that large okay so these would be the bearings for the front They have a larger diameter hole in them. You just gotta make sure it fits that shaft, which it does. So. All right. So we need the arms. Want to make sure we put these in correctly. So this is going to face the top, and if that faces the top. This would probably have to go here. Yeah, I think that goes that way. And We'll make that one goes that way. Okay, so then this will go like this, and this will go like this. All right, let's do this. Okay, so now that we have that in place like this, now these guys do have little rubber grommets in them, both of them, so that's good, they should. sure to keep that drive shaft in place. Okay. Okay. So there you go. That would be the front. So now let's put the shocks in. Now, the shocks for the front and the rear are all the same size, so you don't really need to worry about it. Also, they are oil filled, but I didn't, um, I didn't unscrew them. And it seems like they still have oil in them. I'm not gonna bother taking these apart. I'm gonna leave them as is, they don't leak. And so that's why I'm going to leave them the way they are. <laughs> Otherwise, if I take them apart and rebuild them, they might be prone to leaking. So for the front here, there's a screw that goes in front and there's a bushing that comes in from the back. Like so. And then that screws into, I'm gonna screw it into this outer, outer one here. I think that's where they were to begin with. Not sure, but that's what I'll do. Okay, and for the top is gonna go here. And so we're gonna need the screw and a bushing. Okay, so that's good. We'll 
do the same for the other side here. The reason you saw me screw a lot of these screws, I start off by going counterclockwise. I do that to hear it click. When it clicks, I know it found the previous thread that was in there. And that's how I can screw it back in and it'll go in really easy. If you don't do that, you might run the risk of cross threading it, making a new thread on top of the old thread. And that's not going to be good because that's an easy way to strip these things. So that's why you um, will see me go a little bit counterclockwise before I screw them in. So that takes care of that. Let's go do the same here for the rear. And now for the rear, the shock, the bottom part goes inside this little recess that's on the A arm here. And so that's what we're going to do. There's the bottom part and that's going to be the top part because it has a special little screw, a little, special little nut that goes into the recess on the back of the shock tower here. So. Don't over tighten it either because you'll strip the threads on the plastic. So, okay. For that bottom part, what I did, in case you missed it, is I put the, the bushing in first, and then I slid the shock and the bushing together into that little recess. Okay, now for the top, this bushing goes in first, but on the rear, you have this that goes inside and it's kind of has some little grooves. The little grooves go on the inside. Okay, so it doesn't go on the top one, it goes on the one just below the top. So you're going to slide that little n nut in first and then th this machine screw should tighten that up. Okay. I'll do the same for the other side here. Okay. So now we have the servos and we'll get those mounted on the tub. So I'm going to put these gear cases aside for the time being. And what I have is a nice new tub rather than trying to take all the deep scratches out of the other one. We'll just put a brand new one in. So we have a couple of pieces that we need to contend with here. Let me clean up these servos a little bit in here because they're kind of dirty. So be right back. Okay, we're going to make this a little easier on ourselves. Here's the steering linkage. We're going to go ahead and pop this guy out of here. And if 
I'm not mistaken. I think this was the steering servo here. We'll figure that out in a second here. Something like that. There we go. I think that's the way that went. So we'd have to really put power to this thing um, so this straightens up so we know where center is um, so we can do that at some point in time a little bit later in the meantime we can go ahead and install this guy I need to get this screw in place here though should be centered now. Okay. So we have a hole here and a hole here where these uh, servo mounts that are already on the servo get screwed in. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. actually have a washer. Okay. Now let me show you a little something with these. Yeah, we can kind of wrap them and then, or just toss them in there, you know, maybe zip tie them. We can also make them look a little bit cleaner. By kind of wrapping them around a pencil or a rod of some sort. And just tightening up on that and then when to remove that you see kind of looks a little bit better if you want to just leave it in there like that so anyways you get the point okay so there's that And this guy here for the uh, the motor controller. So we'll take a look at that next. And why don't we go ahead and wrap that guy as well. Okay. 
So this guy here, might as well. Do a few things. We'll screw the on and off switch back in again. I'm not sure if there was a plate or a sticker that said on and off on that. And I'm gonna have to kind of look at the old chassis once I figure out what I did with it here. Yeah. Apparently the old chassis had a sticker on the side that said on and off. So anyways, okay, let's get this thing screwed in place here. Okay. So now that we've got that in place. Let's go ahead and screw this piece back on. This holds the antenna wire that goes through here. Okay, so now we have to deal with the speed controller. And the interesting thing is the original manual that came with this, had you put an electronic speed controller in. But in this case, this came to us with the manual speed controller. So we're just gonna kind of stick with that. We can p always put a Novak controller in here if we wanted to, but Let's just keep this vintage. Just putting that in temporarily. So I think this thing then went something like this. So So now we want to find out where center is here. I think that's where we want to be. That needs to be, this needs to be centered right there. Okay. I think that's where we're at right there. So let me get this screwed back in here. So that's the center there. And then this goes, and it's screwed in right here. Okay. So there we go. Yep. That will work. Okay. There we go. So now we got that back together. And I think that this, yes. So this piece here helps support the servo. So let me go ahead and put that in place. All right, there we go. So now we got that situated. So I think we're ready to start putting the gear cases on next. So before we do that, let's get this steering thing situated again, the way we had it. So, There's the steering servo. This is what we popped 
Okay, sorry guys, I inadvertently hit the camera off. So I'm working on the steering right now, and this is going to go something, something like this. Yeah, I think that's the way that goes. So let me screw this in. So there's a step screw that comes in here and then we'll put a washer there and then that'll screw into this front hole here. This is all coming back to me now. Shoot, I should just get a manual. Okay, and we got to do the same thing for this one. There's a step screw. With a washer. Yep, that's the way it went. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, so I'm just gonna put these guys in place here and then let me go get the, uh, the gear cases. Okay, be right back. Okay, so got the gear cases back. And basically, this guy here is going to screw. How do we get the screw in here? It's got a screw. into these two holes right in the back here. So that's where that's going to go. And then these two holes here will line up with these two here. That's the way it should work. Okay. So these will be the easiest to screw in right away, so let's start with those. That way we hold the gear case in place. Okay, so now the seat sink screws onto these two top areas here. Let's go ahead and screw the heat sink in. That goes with this, this so this heat sink basically keeps, there's a resistor underneath it that gets very hot. So, and that's what that, shielding this for. Okay, so that's in place. So the next thing we're going to do is put the front gear box in play here along with this guy. Okay, so there's two holes here and they go and they line up with the two holes here. And then there's this one as well that lines up with the pin here. So we've got to also make sure that the shaft is already in place when so this goes in. And it should just kind of pop into place. this in place. Let's go ahead and snap the steering rods here in place. And there's two more screws that go here 
on the bottom to hold the gearbox in place there. Okay, so I think that pretty much wraps everything up as far as the chassis is concerned. Um, we can put the bumper, the bumper on. So why don't we do that? All right. place as well and let's uh, where this comes from I think it might go in the back So now let's put the wheels and tires on. Just gotta put the pin in. Alrighty, so this is for the antenna, so we're not gonna we're not gonna really use it. We're gonna just tuck this away. We can always use a little plastic uh, antenna thingy for it. So as far as we're concerned, though, this chassis is finished. How do you like that? It's a nice little drifting chassis right there for sure. So let's, uh, let's put the body on it now that we have a nice clear body and see what that looks like. Okay, you know, we made a little mistake. Um, I put the rear um, body mounts on the front um, instead of the back. So obviously that's not going to work. All right, what do I always say? What do I always say? Learn from my mistakes, right? Yeah, for God's sakes. It's kind of, because it's, it's late. It's almost 3.30 in the morning right now. I wanted to finish this tonight, so. Okay, let's 
try this one more time. That's better. So there you go. That looks sweet. It'll be nice um, when this is painted, but that came out that came out looking really good. That body came out really nice, really nice and clear. Um, again, uh, nitro, um, nitro fuel. <laughs> if it's a thin coat of to me a paint like this was, um, this is better than new. I mean, really, it's almost crystal clear. It's really nice, really nice body. So. The only thing that we'll need to do um, is we do have the uh, the spoiler, we do have the front grill, but I'm going to leave those in the bag because again, um, the body needs to be painted. So um, yeah, so that's the deal. Um, we could put the spoiler on. I mean, what the heck? We'll leave the body clear. I'm probably going to end up selling this thing anyways. Um, so rather than having the pieces get lost, why don't we do that? Let's put, let's put the pieces on the body and then we can just wrap up this video. So let's put this aside here. Let's get the grill back on. There's the front grill. We never did 3D print a, an emblem. That might still be in the works. I don't know, we'll see. But let's get this rear spoiler on. So, I think we can leave it at that. Oh gee, even the, wind, the windshield wiper. There's the windshield wiper that we can put on. <laughs> All right. So now I think we are, we can call this done. It's over here. All right. There we go. Get this stuff out of the way here. I think that we can call this done. So what did we do? We cleaned the, we stripped the paint off the body, took out all the bad decals, took the paint off the body. Um, rebuilt the chassis, cleaned all the parts, um, and left it as original as possible. So we will leave it to a new owner at some point in time. This will be for sale on eBay and we'll leave it to the new owner to paint it any way they want. But in the meantime, this was from 1994. So, you know, we're talking about 26 years, 25, 26 years old. Um, and uh, it looks fresh, just like day one. So hope you enjoyed the video. Um, another long one, I know. But um, I wanted to make sure that it at least showed you how I strip paint off of some of these Lexan bodies. Now, this nitro fluid doesn't work on all Lexan bodies because paints are different. Um, and even some plastics are different. So, you know, but if it's a, like I said, and I, I keep re re reiterating, if it's a thin coat of Tamiya paint that usually works wonders with nitro fluid, um, the body comes out, you know, crystal clear after you, you um, basically wipe the paint and then use soap and water and, you know, clean up whatever little residue um, you have with a, a throwaway um, garage rag um, dipped in nitro fluid. It works great. So you see the results. Um, the chassis came out beautiful, um, nice. 
nice and clean chassis. Um, looks like new. Um, so not much more to say. Uh, this is the original box. Came with it. AMG Mercedes Benz. And there you have it. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something from my mistakes. And uh, so, like I always say, hey, life is short. Enjoy it. Live it to the fullest. Go play. Peace out.